I've just finished the casting of Frank Stone, one of the more confusing games uh, that I've ever played. It's a bit rough around the edges to say the least and uh, it leaves you with more questions than it does answers, but if anything it reaffirmed my belief that Supermassive Games are the most on and off developer pub slash publisher in gaming. You could maybe name one who fits the description more, but honestly how do you go from this, to this, to this, to this? Hanging out. Maybe it's part of some old museum display or something. Right, that's probably. Before we do anything, though, I just want to mention the Until Dawn remake. I was probably the most sceptical person about this game being made, but holy hell, they gave Until Dawn an atmosphere. Seriously, though, the Until Dawn remake is fantastic. They somehow managed to improve upon it with new scenes, a stunning atmosphere, and making the Wendigos proper hunter-like creatures. It's hard to explain. You have to play it, but honestly, it's not going to be a focus of this video. I might make a video on its own about that game because honestly it's one of my favorite looking games everything looks so murky and it's such a step up in terms of cinematography and atmosphere i just feel like it needs to mention because i played it recently and honest to goodness i'm gonna get into frank stone but the, the you can't even compare them let's just say that but until dawn that first game was pretty successful wasn't it until Dawn offered something very different and unique at the time of its release, and I don't just mean the gameplay and ban branching story path. The whole playable movie gimmick could only really reach heights at that point with Telltale's The Walking Dead Season 1. Christ, that was so good. But Supermassive took this formula and amplified it so well. Even though you felt like you had control in The Walking Dead, the story would always end up in the same place. With Until Dawn, you end up in the same place, but the difference is they integrated the quick time event system where if you missed even one, which might seem minuscule at the time, a character could just up and die. And if you finish the game with X amount of characters alive and X amount dead, in some cases it can sting if just like, say, this person or that person died. Do you know why? Because Until Dawn creates this unfathomable idea called likeable characters. Something that Supermassive Games has struggled with since 2014. And even if you don't find some of them likeable, you can't deny they act like real people. Most of the time, anyway. You just got mucked. This acts in complete contrast to the game they followed Until Dawn up with, which for Supermassive, it was crucial that they got this right, and did they? No. Don't get me wrong, Man and Madan did some interesting things, and it's got an interesting premise on surface level, with it being about the um, SS Orang Madan that became a shipwreck in the late 1940s, and no one could figure out why. See, this is what makes the Dark Anthology interesting though. Every game takes real world events and gives an interpretation on what could have gone down, but with a supernatural twist. Little Hope looks at the um, Andover Witch Trials. Houses of Ashes is set during the 2003 invasion of Iraq, touching on fucking vampires of all creatures, and Devil in Me takes a modern spin on the H.H. H. Holmes murders. They've all got very interesting premises to incorporate unique mechanics. There's just one slight problem. These games are total glitch fests. I don't know whether these games in particular were rushed or what to fit them into this catalogue, or whether they used fucking scratch to playtest them, but they're very, very messy performance wise, especially Devil in Me, which is a shame because the game alone kind of stands on its two feet and the rest of them. Unfortunately, this became a running theme in the Dark Anthology, but not in their own standalone games, really. Essentially, the true follow-up to Until Dawn was The Quarry. Now, Until Dawn's writing, whilst cheesy at times, almost seemed intentional to the point where it captures the essence of a mid-2000s horror flick, but had a chilling atmosphere when it wanted to. The Quarry takes this cheesy atmosphere, beats it to death with a stick. Look, I, I like The Quarry, I really did. I think Ted Raimi and Siobhan Williams save it from becoming a laughing stock at some times, though. The goofiness does not work in the game's favour more often than it does, but regardless, it's good, like it's fine. But this is what I mean, the spectrum of Supermassive knows no bounds. An incredible and insanely unique game that redefined branching storylines, to a piss poor slog fest with a predictable story, to a dark and gritty depressing story about the past burning of innocence where laughs are few and far between, to a complete goofball fest that tries to tickle your balls on a constant basis, it's honestly impressive. Now. The casting of Frank Stone releases, and the homage they pay to Dead by Daylight is hard to ignore. I get it's intentional and it makes sense, 
given the universe and set up, but good lord. The main thing this game has to offer is offering answers to the Dead by Daylight lore, and well, let's be honest, fan service. So if you're not familiar with Dead by Daylight, too bad. That's the main critique, but by this point, those who have played Supermassive's interactive horror movies since 2015 know what they're getting with the cast of Frank Stone. It, I'd, I'd say if you want to play the next great version of that formula, this isn't it. But for Dead by Daylight fans to fill out their lore journals, and it's like, yeah, whatever, that's fine, like, the game's fine, but I've been waiting since 2015 for Supermassive to come out even close to the height of Until Dawn. The quarry was close, House of Ashes was somewhat close, even Frank Stone has moments, but for me, the thing that made Until Dawn cool was the fact that the antagonist absolutely rocked. <laughs> You can't tell me this is the scariest fucking thing of all time. See, Supermassive games have this thing for building up the villain as something completely different than what it actually is before dropping a fat twist out of bumblefuck nowhere. In Until Dawn, it was built up as just another one-dimensional 2000s horror slashes before these fuckers dropping out of nowhere and oh, it's so memorable. The twist essentially makes or breaks a Supermassive game, with it completely derailing Man of Medan, for example. It also doesn't help the case of Little Hope either, these two twists essentially boil down to yeah, the things you're seeing aren't actually happening and god I hate that idea so much. They made the Wendigos insanely cool, you spend the whole game thinking it's just another slasher flick and then you get to the mines and then boom. I enjoyed the quarry and I think the werewolves is a good premise but they were boring, and the design was rushed. I mean, it's not even up for speculation. Look at this boy. Comparing them really, really speaks volumes. By far the best part about the quarry, Bart, Laura and Travis, is easily Jacob. A character that got ridiculed from the start, but his character arc-ish genuinely caught me by surprise. Speaking well on emotion and, well mental health. I say this due to the ending where he realises what he's done and that whole section with Emma, brilliant. A lot just pass off as insecurity, even by Emma herself, but honestly, I appreciate that section. All we have to do is wait it out. Can I wait with you? It's a free country, man. It works in complete contrast to characters like Dylan and Ryan who had potential, especially Ryan, but unfortunately he was stuck with this how do you do fellow kids feel to him. To be truthful, I think Until Dawn may just have been lightning in a bottle. I don't want to come out here and say it was a fluke per se, but given where the writing has been since, like how do you even get back there? In supermassive style games, the characters should come first, every single time. It feels like they've been too preoccupied with trying to make the monsters live up to the Wendigos instead of trying to make the good guys live up to Mike or Sam or Chris. The cast of Until Dawn had such conflicting minds and that's without even touching on Josh. They went under real change in development and were actually affected by the traumatising events of the story. I know I said I wouldn't bring it up, but the remake of Until Dawn, the post credit scene of um, Sam, is fantastic. It, it just adds an extra layer. The issue is, in other games, while yes, their attitudes change to things happening around them, obviously, they were the same person from start to finish, which in some cases is fine. The characters of Until Dawn are just so messed up by the end of the game, and it's clear they'll never be the same again. Alright, I'm bad. I'm a badass. I've seen what these fuckers can do, and I don't want to see it again. Maybe, hopefully, Director 8020 can turn things around and give us some actual consistency. Having seen the first trailer, it's got potential? Thanks for watching. I know it's been a while since my last video, but I wanted to get something out about a developer I've been, you know, wanting to make a video on for quite a while now. Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments. I'm, I'm honestly tempted to make that remake video. It depends if you want it or not. Just honestly, just let me know. But with that being said, if you want to see more videos like this one, then please consider subscribing. It really helps me out. And yeah, speak to you next time.